Good morning, how are you? I'm good, good. So, a very, very warm welcome Thank to you. Aditya Institute of Management Studies and Research on behalf of the faculty members as well as all the students who are present here. So, this is a different kind of a welcome. Uh, last time when we welcomed you for the Innovation Summit as the guest of honor, uh, that was uh, totally mm -hmm. different. It was uh, offline and now we have shifted to online. A huge transition in just a couple of months. So world over, there are so many changes which are happening and uh, all of us are learning to become more innovative. So I think uh, I would like to introduce you first to all the attendees. Mr. Avinash Jangiani mm -hmm. is the founder CEO of Play to Transform Group. He is a senior design thinking, transformation and innovation leader with more than 20 years of global experience with Deloitte Consulting and Reliance in the US. He has been honored as top 25 exemplary mentors of change by Niti Ayo. Under his leadership, his work won six Lion Awards at the Cannes International Festival of so definitely on your behalf, I extend a very, very hearty welcome to Mr. Avinash Jangiani to take forward the session, uh, which has been titled appropriately as Hacking Career Growth with Design Thinking. So I, I think uh, Mr. Jangiani, all over to you. And thanks a lot for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. I really appreciate the welcome and the introduction and everything, and I'm so glad I'm able to um, speak to all the students. I'm so excited, actually. I, I mean, is everyone able to hear me? If you can, just raise your hand on the uh, icon so I know it's clear. And even I'm just doing some experimentation and design thinking here, right? We'll see what works. <laughs> so if you can just raise your hands, uh, students, if you don't mind, just to give me an indication I'm clear. Uh, I'll just scroll down. Unfortunately, the chat feature is not working, but uh, at least the hand should indicate. I see one hand out of or two out of 48. So I'm assuming the rest of them are either sleeping or can't hear me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We'll give uh, a few more seconds to make sure everybody's here. Yeah, I, I'm sure everyone is there because we have just yeah, had yeah. one session. Yeah, which we okay. ended uh, at around 11. Yeah, so possibly people went, took a break, but they are back. Okay. I can see 54 attendees as of now. Okay, okay. Uh, in the previous one, we had uh, 101. So we are expecting the others to just join in. Uh, possibly you can just warm people up. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, the previous uh, session ended at what time? Uh, it ended at 11. Eleven. Uh, everybody's probably just in. Yeah, going for a bio break. Yeah, great. So, um, you know, as I said, I'm really honored to address all of you. And um, in the next one hour or so, I'm going to keep it quite interactive. Uh, uh, reason being, you know, it's about you. It's about you, the students of Aditya Institute. It's about you, the future of India, right? Uh, and a lot of the things we'll be speaking about and uh, discussing in the next one hour uh, should hopefully uh, open up your minds um, as to the world we are living in today, especially with this whole situation we are in. And also, how can we... Uh, transform this into an opportunity of growth, right? And one of the ways we are going to have a look at is the design thinking process. But um, I, I want to just begin this thing by a little interaction, if that's okay with you. I see about 60 uh, attendees. So if you can uh, do me a favor, and uh, I'm sure all of you have a smartphone with you, right? Um, I know you do, so you don't have to pretend you don't. <laughs> Uh, if, you, uh, if you all can see the slide which I have up there, it's called About You. Just go to the website which is over here. It's called uh, www.nt.com. And you'll 
that is four two. So if you can please do that, it'll be great. And as you do it, you will appear on a screen Sorry, that looks like. Uh, Possibly just have. Yeah, even your voices. Yeah, your. Yeah. Yeah. So as you, as I mean, as everybody just goes to that website and enters the code, the first screen you will see is about you, and you'll see a little heart up there. So go ahead and click that heart in order to just let me know that you're here. I should see about sixty hearts, right? Roughly. Uh, uh, please don't click the heart. A lot of like, you know, click. <laughs> if if you keep clicking, clicking the heart, it, it'll be a duplicate. But anyways, go ahead and enjoy yourself. We'll just give a few others a minute, and then we will proceed to the next um, slide. Is everyone able to hear me clearly now? Yes, yes, okay. we can hear you clearly. Oh, yes, great. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because here in the virtual world, you have to over communicate and I'm going to say things over and over again because I want to make sure you're hearing me. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to just unmute yourself and uh, action. Yeah, so I see about 20 hearts. I'm assuming the rest of them logged in yet. So I'm just going to repeat my instructions once more. Go to the site called www.menti.com and enter the code 874629. The moment you do that, you can do it through your smartphone. You don't have to use your laptop so that you can do both, right? You can have a look at my presentation as well as uh, the screen that you might have opened. So about five, we'll give you guys a minute because I know a few of you are still getting I think it's a Friday, I know. Everybody's excited. Weekend. Yeah, so we have 75. Great. And we have about 28 hearts. So maybe we'll go to the next slide once we hit the magic 50 number. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so you can keep thank it only use a unique account. So you know it's not going to increase the number uh, only by clicking hard. So 30 is great. That's awesome. So it's so re reassuring, right? Like you guys are in and you're with me right now, right? So it you know it's so interesting how in the online world I can use data to make sure that you're absolutely with me as opposed to an off offline uh, you know, uh, meeting or session. I literally have to look into your eye that to know whether you're daydreaming or you're looking at your phone or your right? So it's quite amazing how this is it. Yeah. Okay, great. So with that, I think we'll start off um, now. Um, you will be, uh, you know, you'll be going to the next slide where, I, and it's just a, uh, you know, interaction. I'd like you to just write one word uh, about how you're feeling about your future today. How are you feeling? Just one or two uh, emotions, right? Maybe anything. Are you feeling worried? feeling happy right and any any emotions which you're feeling today um, go for it because uh, you're not being judged in any way it's anonymous so feel free uh, to enter as many words as you can you want to because I'd like to really understand what are you thinking these days right and it's so important because um, you need to share this with us. You need to be able to share this with your institute. 
and your uh, future employees, right? At the end of the day, it's about you. I want to make sure give you the right support. I'm just now hidden the results so you can see as you're entering, right? Isn't that amazing? How you're feeling today? So overall, I'm just going to read out a few, but please go on entering. I'm not going to stop this for at least some time, uh, a, a minute. So a lot of us overall are feeling worried, um, uncertain, uh, exciting. Yes, it's, it's exciting. You're probably receiving a dopamine rush every time. Minister says unlock 1.0, unlock 2.0, right? So you're getting all these... Uh, rushes and it's exciting because i do and it's exciting it's not only exciting for you um it's exciting for all of us right in in the you know in the last two months the amount of uh transformation and disruption we are seeing across society um and systems is just amazing right yeah so unpretendable i like that confused um upset um anxious adventure stressed worried so it's it's quite clear that a lot of us right in general are feeling quite anxious and worried right and why i think i mean as you said you've also used the word uncertain because you're feeling like uncertainty is just hitting you under the belt right it's just amazing yeah that's great awesome yeah so is, I mean, if it's okay, we'll move to the next slide. We have about 87 attendees. I do want the people who joined in a little later to also be a part of this. Uh, so people who have just joined in, please go to www.menti.com and use the code 874629. You will be directed to this slide immediately. And as soon as you enter, please enter a few emotions so we know how you're feeling today right um so yeah so so overall it's interesting how happy is actually growing a little bit isn't that isn't that amazing uh dr sunita yeah it's interesting right um, yeah unbalanced yes mixed emotions not easy to focus fear many thoughts yeah so 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 important right because based on our experiences our backgrounds we really uh feel feel in different ways, right? Depending on, you know, where we are in our stage, right? A lot of quite positive, which is interesting. Yeah. Happy is also, I think, now glowing in yellow, which is, which means it's actually uh, a lot of students are feeling like change is here. You know, it looks like a good future, right? But overall, I think still worry is, is like standing out, right? Worry and uncertainty is standing out. Not easy to focus. Hmm. Un insecure. Numb. Yeah, absolutely. And I can I can understand why you're feeling numb, right? Um, I wish I had the chat feature enabled in order to really ask you why. But one of the things that I, I mean, I've been interacting with students in the past uh, two months or so across institutes. And one of the things, you know, which is emerging that we don't know what, how our future is going to change. What is going to happen to our dreams, right? What um, are we supposed to do with our education? You know, is it even relevant anymore? How, how do we build the right kind of skill sets going forward? Um, looking at where where things stand today, right? In terms of um, being able to deal with uncertainty. Great. So I think at this point I'll move to the next slide because it's important. Uh, we move on and uh, one thing i'm going to do is also share these results a little later but um, if we proceed to the ne next uh, uh, question i have is in your opinion what would be the top three skills you believe are relevant for your employability right you will see a, a box in there and just go ahead and enter any skills it could be soft skills uh, or even hard domain related skills anything that you believe are really relevant according to you um, 
ja so hey den den c plot okay intelligent not insincere anything at all because we don't know who you are right so just go ahead and enter honestly anything you believe you you should you truly believe and it's not something that the world is saying to you right something which you believe from your heart that i really believe that these are the two or three skills that's going to make me successful as an individual and not the general uh you know all, you know all students it's not it's not about everyone you know in the world we are living you have to take care of your your right and that starts who right what is important for me what are the skills i need to achieve my dream my goals right i want to know as many skills that are important for you as a group of people right so i see about 19 people have responded okay i'll just read them out quickly um so we are problem solving smart work presentation skills communication creative skills adaptability good one uh, presence of mind yes analytics punctuality communication leadership entrepreneurial decision making adaptability patience yeah patience absolutely again adaptability adaptability domain related knowledge innovative thinking problem solving team work so important right in the world of today creativity and innovation is so so important and then patience obviously determination right which is really grit and resilience right in these times we are talking about the ability to face hurdles uh, um, along the way is becoming super super important because the world is changing uh, all the assumptions um, you are making today may not even be relevant tomorrow right so how does one really deal with all of this that's going on right negotiation communication resilience yes yes that's good that's good uh, agility yes yeah, so so much more important right the ability to be flexible uh, the ability to act fast um, as, you know as they say uh, um, uh, you know you uh, you got to be bias to towards action now right as opposed to planning and strategy and good the world is moving too fast today right and in the ever changing world of uncertainty being innovative is not an option yeah yeah great uh, i think all this is really really good information in general i i so if you can just raise your hand and just let me know if this exercise was useful uh in some way did it give you visibility as to what everybody thinks about uh, how they are feeling today and really generally sharing skills right yeah if you can just raise your hand over here and just give me a, a high five and say that yes this was great uh and hopefully we can move to the next slide then right i'm just going to scroll down okay great i see a number of hands up so i'm assuming you guys all participated and giving me a nod there thank you so much so we have about 98 attendees now okay great so so again thank, thank you so much for the interaction um at this point i want to go, go back to our main presentation all right uh okay great yash parekh is requesting control unfortunately Yash, if you're a student, I'll have to deny. <laughs> Is that okay? All right. Uh, okay. All right. So we get you, and you need to know a little bit about that. I can help you. You know, and start to speak the language, understand, and just relevant, right? It's clear that right now your face is a lot of worry. Uh, you understand. and the critical skills which are required in the workplace and which is great but you're worried right so a little bit about um, who i am and i think uh, dr uh, uh, sunita did a great job of introducing me but i just wanted to do a recap so that you understand from where i'm uh, thinking 
Now I have a, about 22 years of experience in the corporate space. Um, worked in the US for about 12 years, and at this point, uh, uh, a small team of senior people are running a company called Play to Transform. Uh, the objective of Play to Transform is actually to transform learning as we know it, right? Learning and development, and we are actually working with a number of institutes um, across groups, schools, as well as uh, higher education, as you said, uh, and also organizations and enterprises with their learning and development, uh, you know, teams to make sure that they are embedding the right kind of skill sets and mindsets to help you become successful, to help you drive innovation in India today, right? Which is what we are trying to do, really. So we do a lot of design thinking workshops uh, under Play to Transform. You can also go to LinkedIn, uh, look up there, uh, and, and so Play to Transform, if you want Instagram. Uh, you know, if you're on Instagram, uh, you can see a lot of the uh, interactions we do with corporates and with students, um, you know, in that space. Now, uh, you know, I wanted to take a step back and really help you understand uh, how things are evolving and in order to just create a context for the next one hour. Right now, the thing is, um, before the year 2000, we, we were all in the industry, right? We, we were all in ways uh, born and brought up to really become very operational, right? In terms of doing our job really, really efficiently. Nobody ever questioned our creativity. Uh, in fact, our schools also uh, at this point don't have any creativity, innovation, problem solving courses. Uh, higher education is also trying to bring about all these uh, nuances and skill sets through the case studies and your ways of working, which is what is really the age we were living in until last year, right? So, so in order to differentiate yourself, you just needed to improve yourself incrementally in order to help you stay relevant next year, right? But now, as you're going into beyond 2020, right, it becomes so important that you just don't upgrade yourself. You start thinking of things like lifelong learning, uh, problem solving, innovation, and just not innovation, right? Disruptive innovation. Starting from yourself to the employees and the organizations who you work with, right? And the reason why we have this fish with uh, who is actually two wings is because we are saying that you, which is the next generation, are like flying fish. Now, the only way you can differentiate yourself if you grow a new pair of wings, right? And a new pair of wings, in some ways, is a symbolic representation of, of the skill sets mindsets and technologies you will need to really move yourself into an exponential right uh, now to re really stay relevant in the new 21st century and especially the world has changed and i'll show you how in the last two months we need to adapt and grow grow faster grow with agility right a lot of you have also uh, stated that you have to adapt and you have to grow there is no other option there's no incrementally I'll improve my skills, incrementally I'll, I'll do one job with one plan, with one roadmap, and we'll apply to one job, one industry, it's not going to work, right? And I'll, and I'll help you understand why, right? Uh, so here's why, right? I'm going to give you a few highlights as to what's going to happen in the future. Now, as Play to Transform, as, as a part of for work, we also do a lot of trends analysis and what the experts out there are saying globally as well as in India, what the government is doing, right? Because I work with Niti Ayo. So a lot of the plans are really heading towards what? And I'll help you understand. Now treat this as a long term play, right? It's, it, it's not short term. It could happen sooner because the way the world is accelerating, we've seen in the past eight weeks, we've seen a growth of a decade, right? There's exponential digital acceleration happening around you, right? Even though you are at home, we are seeing tremendous amount of technology uh, uptake. And I mean, I was a CIO before, and I remember that I, I used to approach clients and beg them to use, uh, you know, cloud-based systems and all of that. In the last 
two months, the number of requests we have got, we have our hands full. And I'm speaking in general about the general technology community, right? Businesses and brands want digital now because that's the way of life right now, right? Uh, two, in the next few years, you'll start seeing AI become the new electricity, right? right? Which, which means it will be behind every device, everything around you, and you won't even know it, right? Uh, smartness will happen through AI, right? Now, the thing is, you and I have a lot of ideas, right? And especially a young blood as yourself, you have a lot of creative energy. But here's what the deal is. Ideas mean nothing unless you don't apply it to solve problems, right? Uh, unless you're not creatively applying data technology to solve problems which are big enough and complex, you can't assure yourself of a successful future. Uh, three industries which we are saying are going to really drive growth and are disrupting as we speak are healthcare, agriculture, and education, right? Uh, so the hint over here is if you're looking for jobs, uh, yes, I'm sure you're looking at BFSI as well. So do that. But if you're looking at uh, exponential growth, right, in terms of accelerating your uh, view uh, about the future, then these are the industries and startups you want to join, right? Now, the other interesting thing we are seeing is people are actually become uh, are becoming a lot more sustainable. They are trying to see in their supply chain, how do we inculcate the right kind of uh, social as well as sustainable business practices, right? So things like child labor, uh, these kind of things, which weren't, you know, I mean, all that was happening under the hood. Now, people, brands specifically, are becoming really cautious about this, right? So I wanted to bring this, so your next employer, or if you're planning to be an entrepreneur, make sure that sustainability and social impact is a part of their vision. These are the people who are going to be successful in the future. And last one, which is a little bit out to say, but since I sit on the ethics committees and a lot of the technology firms, uh, global technology firms, one of the which is emerging is people are going to start driving out eventually. I'm not saying. Uh, you know, out of the cities, and they are going to go toward the outer cities where there's more sustainability. There's going to be a, lo a lot of rural uh, uh, uptake there. And one of the interesting things I was on the uh, Japanese uh, uh, events attended. They've actually started designing the next generation uh, avatar workforce, uh, which is quite interesting because I'm sure a lot of you have seen the movie Avatar, uh, and if you if you remember the whole scene in the end where you can remotely go inside, uh, you know, a robot and and do things, a lot of that is actually beginning to happen. We are, we are seeing uh, glimpses of that because of the way things are now, right? Everything online. So I can be sitting uh, in India operating a robot, say, anywhere in Europe or, or in the US. And this has a, a massive uh, um, uh, implication and ramifications for the uh, industries which are a lot more, uh, you know, I will say globalized, right? So India as such, at, at this point, as you know, Kirana stores, uh, ENY recently launched a report, I think last week saying that uh, almost uh, how much? 60% uh, of the Kirana stores are going digital. And it's not just the wallet, it's actually beyond that, right? And so if I look at so really India has transformed actually from the streets to home and obviously the last two months we had to keep busy and you were interested in drama you will not believe that, that we did drama classes online and I could never imagine I don't know if you could uh, that doing learning drama online right and it's just amazing uh, the stuff and the innovation which, which is happening out there right so the world as we see today and, and uh, rapidly changing is that, that you'll be pretty much able to do anything everywhere, right? Anything everywhere without really owning. And yeah. So here's what it's becoming. Our life is becoming full of experiences which are behavior driven and enabled by technology, right? But here's what the differentiator is. At the end of the day, it's all about you. Remember that. It's all about personalization. How do I create uh, 
personalized human centric experiences because all of us today are after experiences right so our life is going to be transformed with the way things are looking but here's what the deal is i wanted to just spend a minute on this now see 20 years back when somebody had to draw a graph or a journey about how their career is going to look like it was pretty much clear cut right like we have very limited options we had either become a doctor an engineer or ca and a, you know and a few other options and those were very very well defined through and uh, experimented upon like we know it's going to work but, but now the flip side of having so is that uh, there's going to be really need to know, know what you're good at right because unless you are not standing out unless you're not the best at what you believe you want to do in life you will never be able to get there trust me because we don't have any linear way of defining life anymore and it's not because of the last two months it's because of the wave of technology and the way uh, uh behavior change we are seeing across uh, no no industry today is doing the same thing so as an example if i'm looking at uh, say real estate real, real estate is not about development anymore it's about experiences right i'm talking about all kinds of other industries like technology uh, other kind of overlaps like uh, hospitality is now overlapping with travel real estate is overlapping with uh, hospitality uh, uh, you know use you know bfsi is now doing a lot of things which are overlapping right so a lot of other things which are happening in the space and you need to understand that please do not go with one one industry because it's not going to work I, and i'll help you understand what you need to do then right the other thing i wanted to also say was uh, something interesting right uh, obviously with a sense of humor that uh 20 years back we had experts or go to people right we, we knew that, that if i wanted advice on banking i would I, this guy if i wanted uh, for a specific industry we could easily do that but now the problem is uh, there's nobody who's an expert even a 60 year a uh, 60 year old gentleman or the most experienced exo in the world will not be able to give you advice that you right and and which is actually a good thing and a little bit of a trouble something depending on how you think right and, I, and i'll help you understand why in a bit right right so the good thing is that you are your only role model guys like right? okay so the next part of the presentation is really to help you understand so what right so i wanted to just give you a context about the world that you're going to live in right in the next say decade or so and what you need to do about it right i've been talking to a lot of organizations and we in some ways as play to transform are the bridge between organizations and uh, the 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 in institutes and the education sector right and we try and bridge that gap as much as we can bring some reality to the uh, situation one of the questions hr is asked, how how are you unique how are you bringing your unique selling proposition right uh, so in some ways it is your swag right swag as in skills wisdoms attitude and goals why are these four things all very very important and i'll help you understand why see now in the world we are living today proposition guys is actually our only selling proposition earlier we had this thing called usp and it was one thing or whatever right now usp is the only way to be successful so here here's what you need to do you need to understand immediately what are the 21st century skills that increase employability now the good news is that a, lo a lot of you already aware of it uh, but in order to just recap a little bit i'll just highlight a few that i feel very very strongly about and i think whether you like or not you need to work on your skill right number one skill in my mind right in order to deal with uncertainty you will need to be creative you will need to build the ability to think differently right and disruptively so stay crazy and stay stupid as i say right uh, the other one i would say is adaptability now now see until two months back i would then say adaptability is number two but now the way things are uh, you are pretty much on your own right which means you will need to take a lot of self initiative 
and adapt to anything that comes along the way. It's pretty much the world is gamified today. And I wouldn't even say leadership. I would actually say social and cultural awareness is the number three things. And to be honest, one of the reasons uh, why you, uh, you know I'm so excited about speaking to you guys today and why I've done a lot of work in this whole space of innovation is because there's one skill that we didn't speak about ever, but now it's become very, very important. Is this whole, whole uh, aspect of social emotional learning, the ability to empathize, because that's the first step for solving complex problems, right? So I, I wanted to just do this with you. Uh, so here's a quick, in some ways, a quiz, uh, if you can help solve this, and then we'll see how the answer comes out. Um, so the question goes like this, that there are 26 kids at the beach, then 37 more kids come. In total, how, how many kids are at the now? What would you say is the answer? Now I'm wondering how does one answer this when I can't see the chat? But anyone wants to just unmute and say what the answer is, it's fine. I'll just listen. Anyone wants to unmute and say what this answer is. So 26 kids at the beach and 37 kids more join in. Uh, I hope everyone is here. <laughs> I have no idea because I'm like speaking. Okay, 101 attendees, that's good. But, but uh, uh, I have no idea. So if anyone wants to and uh, just and what the answer could be. Anyone at all? Is everyone able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. So do you, do you want to give this a shot? How, how many kids are at the beach? Quickly. I'm not going to judge. The 101. Your voice is breaking up. How many? 53. Okay, anyone else wants to give it a shot? If you enter, if you're entering uh, answers into the chat box, uh, then I will not be able to see it because I don't have access to it. I just wanted to let you know. Twenty six. Twenty six. How is that? Because twenty six kids are yeah. currently in the beach, so I think it would be there. Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. assuming so. Yes. So the the simple uh, answer, if you just do the math, is 63, right? But the question you need to ask yourself is, do you really want to have so many kids on the beach, right? Uh, now, obviously, you'll be laughing in your head. Uh, in the world we are living today, guys, only knowing, only being uh great at math or only being great as a uh, critical thinker is not going to work you need a mixture of skills and this kind of skill uh, should be encouraged right it's it's absolutely appreciated in the corporate world because at the end of the day solving this problem is reality right you, you know these are real world problems by letting 63 kids be on a beach there's going to be a problem, right? And your ability to think critically 
in, in these situations, right? Ethically, you know, critically and doing the right thing, asking the right questions is more important than just knowing how to add two numbers, right? So which is the point I wanted to make here. And just a few of these mindset and attitude shifts, which I believe are required, right? See, we are all, all uh, uh, you guys are all in the business, you know, right? In a business. But what I would encourage you to do, not moving yourself into understanding that business is actually run by human beings. With, with or value. Sorry. Uh, if you know, if everyone else can just go on mute now, it'll be good. Whoever was talking. So, yeah. Now, the second thing is a zone of comfort to a zone of opportunity. Look for, uh, you know, employers and join organizations which encourage you to create, right? And encourage you to really create create zones of opportunities where you can experiment a lot from scalable efficiency to sustainable creativity. This is so important, right? Because gone are the days where we were trained to become robots, right? The operational jobs, as you saw in the 21st century skills chart, they're all gone. Everything is about creativity, critical thinking, innovation, and all of that. Moving from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Understand that irrespective of your age, your brain has the ability to grow and learn new things. It's, a, it's actually a misconception that, uh, you know, at the age of 25 or 35, we will not be able to adapt and change, which is absolutely not true. Okay. And the other thing is now it's become so obvious that you have to work in uncertain environments. And when the world is like this, why not just find your flow? Just find that harmony in the chaos, right? And I'll help you understand how to really do this, right? So... So in general, we are saying, principally, we are saying that just take life a little light, right? Like stop just being stressed about everything. Uh, understand that behind every challenge is actually an opportunity on the flip side, right? So start playing seriously. And it's a way of thinking, right? Uh, one of the things I wanted to introduce you to was the concept of incremental growth and exponential growth. This is so important. And this concept of exponential growth can be applied anywhere. It can be applied in technology. It can also be applied in your own life. And I'll help you understand how, how. right? So at this point, you are actually, you are actually where at the late or probably between and build if you have a of experience, right? Now, if it was years back or even say a few, it would be very linear, in growth, right? Your growth would be very incremental. But now you have enough options out there to enable exponential thinking. Now, what is exponential thinking? If you're thinking right, if you're if you have those five attitudes and those mindsets, if you truly start exercising those 21st century skills, three or four of them, I guarantee you you, you will go into an exponential growth graph, which Looks like this. This is the graph that a lot of the big uh, uh, driving towards. Why is Amazon unbeatable? Face uh, MS, right? These kind of guys are actually on that spiral growth of exponential thinking. They have the right skills, mindsets, processes, technologies to help them shoot into the future. And it doesn't matter whether they are. If and uncertain times or certain times you will always see exponential growth and that's the concept i'm here to you too so, so that you can apply this in your own lives now how do i do this right so at this point i just want to stop and ask if anybody has a question just for a few minutes so that i mean we can also take a quick breath over here so anyone has any questions before i go into the how Just unmute and go ahead and ask. Uh, some folks have their hands up. Mega, Mahima. I don't know if that means you want to ask. So just go ahead, uh, Bhavesh. Just go ahead and ask questions. Smriti, Swapnil, you have your hands up. So 
go ahead ask any question you want at this point any any verification you might have uh, you want me to make before i go into the how hello yes who speaking uh, sir actually you uh, ramesh speaking sir from mms ramesh maria hi ramesh so can you uh, your uh, sir actually you spoke about uh, critical thinking so in a corporate uh, how can we apply in corporate in real life to actually uh, critical uh, think and to do some stuff in a uh, company sure thoughts on that sure sure so okay great uh, i appreciate the question so i'm going to discuss the how of applying these skills in a bit like is is what my next section is so if you can hold hold on to that question i'm going to answer it a little more holistically i'm going to be speaking about how to apply your creativity critical thinking skills adaptability skills agility skills in the corporate world right i'm going to give you a framework for that is that okay ramesh yes sir sure okay thank you any other questions or doubts or anything that we've done before we go into our last 15 minutes no okay i'll just move to the how now i have spent the last say about 40 minutes uh, helping you understand the way the world looks uh, right now and how it's going to look in the future we also sp spoke about what are the kind of skills and mindsets you will need to be successful in the future right now we're going to talk about how we're going to make this happen for you and only for you i'm doing this right uh, one of the trends and you can google this up to see one of the processes which is growing very fast is called design thinking now design thinking very quietly and interestingly has been implemented by some of the fastest growing companies today like apple coca cola ford ibm intuit nike png and interestingly these are also the most innovative companies who are using design led mindsets right uh the design thinking is something that i'll be introducing you to but i want you to understand what, how can we use what they have applied the last day to help us uh, stay relevant in the future and this framework you can apply to innovation you can apply to experience building you can apply to strategy you can apply to marketing customer experience uh sales and operations you can pretty much apply this framework anywhere you're facing a complex problem right uh so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to introduce i'm just going to play a video uh where she's going to talk to you about a little bit about what the concept is yeah people aren't sure really what you're talking about when you say design thinking but i think of it really as just another approach to problem solving what's so attractive to me about this to problem solving though is that it allows us to combine a more kind of right brain uh creative thinking with left brain analytical thinking and in this day that we an age that we live in now where we know we need innovation uh, and at the same time we know we need to continue to run our organizations as effectively and efficiently as possible design thinking offers us a process and a set of tools to kind of bring the best of both worlds into our, our decision making process so, so when we see managers who were very successful at growing their top line news what we discovered was they had a set of behaviors that were a lot like designers they developed very deep insights into their customers oftentimes using these ethnographic methods they had a very learning mindset as we call it that is they realized that the way to success uh often was filled with small failures and that basically figuring out how to conduct experiments fast and cheap was the way to deal with life in a world of uncertainty yeah so i hope it was clear right in terms of what what really design thinking is it's actually a very nice process that you can use to build the right kind of 21st century uh, skills to deal with uncertainty uh, critical thinking as ramesh said uh, and also be able to hack into exponential growth which is so important and you can do that today so here's what the process looks like right it's a five step process 
uh, and I'm pretty sure by now you understand the meaning of this whole thing that's going on here. This means in the beginning of the design thinking process, where you're empathizing and defining, you're going to feel very uncomfortable because you don't know what uncertainty means. What is the problem to solve? And once you empathize with yourself and the people who you're solving the problem for, then the problem statement becomes very clear. Then you can define what is that you're chasing, right? What is that dream you're chasing? What are the goals you're chasing, right? Then you go into the ideation phase. Now, the ideation phase over here is not the typical uh, the typical uh, innovations you've been seeing. This is really uh, disruptive creativity. This also means that you will never nail one idea. You'll go out there and implement as many ideas as you can and then improve on it, which, is the, which then leads to the aspect of experimentation. The importance of agility, the importance of improving based on feedback, right? See where things are going. So all that is experimentation. And last but not the least, and this is so important. Today in the world of social media and brand building, where your personal brand is so important for your next break, uh, and I'll help you understand uh, in a bit, you need to understand the importance of creating content that is inspiring and it actually helps you in the long run, right? So this is the five-step process. Now, while uh, we individuals, teams, organizations do the five-step process to solve complex uh, problems, you will see how iterative in nature this is, how you have to keep going back and improving upon yourself, right? So the first thing, even before starting process, is really dreaming. And the important dreaming now, this kind of dreaming is not like daydreaming, right? It's not about just dreaming at night. It's actually pretty much opening your eyes and defining who am I, right? And what is exciting for me? What should that dream be of mine? And a dream is, is always something that is unachievable. For an example, okay, even a decade ago, he knew that he's going to send something to the moon or even to Mars, right? It was just a few years ago when he had the plan, but he had this vision and this dream which he stuck up on his walls and he looked at it every day and he said that, listen, I want to take humanity to the next level, right? And that's what my mission is. It's too boring being on Earth, right? It's his way of thinking. Now, I want you to understand that you need to have a dream that is very personal, that is this. So how do you know whether your dream big? Make sure it's not attainable in the near future. If you think you can do it, you are not dreaming big enough, right? It's got to be disruptive. Uh, disruptive. It's got to be a responsible dream and not something which is going to destroy nature, right? It's going to destroy things, right? It, it's got to be empathetic. It's got to be from the heart. It's got to be about somebody else. You've got to be helping others. Of course, you will be helping yourself, but Tomorrow's entrepreneurs and tomorrow's successful people are not going to be people who are going to be sitting behind a desk doing operational work. They are going to be ambitious. They are going to be about others. And it's got to have a mission in place, right? What is that mission statement of your life, right? Now, as I do this, I'm applying the design thinking process to you. You can pretty much apply this to anything or any complex problem you are you are trying to solve, right? So start with dream, and I think it's a prerequisite. That dream pretty much doesn't change over a, a period of time. The path might change, your journey might change, you might do different things, but ultimately, what is that dream you have to define for yourself? That is a prerequisite to the process. Now, the first thing is empathize. Empathize is empathizing with yourself first, right? This is so, so important. Whenever the designers uh, speak about empathy, they start off about other people. Now, the best designers of their future know who they are. So, understand, ask yourself, what are you most passionate about? What drag these down, right? If you want to take a screenshot of this, guys, go ahead and take it. 
because it's important you first understand what really drives you what is troubling you so look around you right look around you which is a lot more uh, broader and not the small things in life look at the more, more systemic is around you which might uh, uh, ask yourself what do you want to make a difference right what is trending this is so i want to dream big it's good to empathize with yourself and understand your goals for the long term but in order to start you have to start short term you have to take small steps right and the fastest way to take the best short step is actually by looking around and sensing and listening about what is trending today is it sustainability is it social business is it agriculture it's healthcare it's what is it it's ai uh, ask yourself what are which one of these really hits you the most what are you feeling very strongly about right because this will give you a guidance into what you're going to be doing in the future right so empathize is so so important then you start off asking yourself the holy question as to why do you want to do this right why do you want to make this difference what are you trying to really change or develop right in general right uh, what support do you need what kind of mentors do you need what kind of skills do you need what kind of traits you need to develop now it's great that you've taken a you know a very good investment with aditya institute to really hone those skills which will help you stay relevant but as you go into the short term and also the long term is there anything else you need to develop that may not be in the fixed classes you do but then for them what can i do in terms of developing and doing those and long term goals so important to pause at this point unless you are a very for job of empathizing and defining will not be and here's what i mean and you might think i'm a, you know i'm a bit crazy but i can assure you the bill gates the mark zuckerbergs the elon musk the warren buffets all have their rooms decorated with vision cards now i'll help you understand what a vision card looks like uh i i i mean i'm happy to do a workshop and all of that uh, you know in you know in another meeting or whatever but in order to just give you an overview vision boarding is about your ability to think big and to plot what are those long term and short term goals you want right and visualize so or you and doubt how do you want to visualize yourself in the future you need to have a clear cut visual this is what i want to feel in the future where do i want to be in the future what kind of a person i want to be seen as right what kind of a change maker or uh, even if it's not a change maker right what kind of an influencer i want to be right you want to be able to visualize this draw it out clearly your drawing skills are not important here the important thing Thing is, are you able to imagine yourself being there? Right? You have to stick it up on little cards, and you should have many experiences and these kind of drawings up on your wall. I'll be seeing this once before you sleep and once before you wake up because it's a reminder for you every day why you should be excited about today. It should be a reminder about. about what are you chasing right this is what is going to keep you going guys i hope this is making sense right yeah so two steps we've done we've done empathy and we've done define now is the very exciting part right now we know why are we excited about what we want now let's go ahead and get our dream right now here's what is different from what we were born and brought up to be everybody will ask you so what, what is your plan what is your uh, we train to design one career plan because the world expects that from you care who's about the world this is about your career in the world we are living in you need to experiment and if you're going to experiment you need to first design 
not one career plan but i'm encouraging mm-hmm. you to start off your careers with a few options and don't just go with one industry don't just do one thing try and create plans and then share these plans with your inner circle of genuine support now who is this inner circle of genuine support they might be your close friends for starters they might be mentors they might be your uh, instructors in your institutes they might be people like me i'm happy more than happy to mentor you because i want to make sure you get what you deserve right who is your inner circle it could be anyone who is aligned to the goals and your dreams who can help you guide you towards achieving what you want right share the plans with them get feedback now remember when you are thinking and ideating about your career plans no plan is a bad idea no idea is a bad idea why because it comes from you if it's coming from you it can never be bad in your mind it's good and you have to believe in it therefore your self confidence has to be at a very high you can't let yourself down just remember that your ideas are, are always is very important don't anybody judge your ideas or thoughts or your emotions okay i think divergently a few skills in the previous uh, slide what you need to do is now that you know what you want in life you know what your goals are you need to now think about what are those skills that are important what are the do- you know domain skills the 21st century skills it could be adaptability it could be creativity you may want to be very good at communicating you want to be seen as a in a specific you want to be able to invest in lifelong learning and i tell you these days you have a lot of courses available out there online uh, in fact we are also offering courses to really help you become the best at what you want to become and not somebody else what others are asking you to become right and the last thing is at your as you are ideating guys you need to understand that you need to maintain a journal this is this is so important always write down interest interesting incidents experiences stories that you're going through while you are using this process while you're on your journey right just jot it down blindly okay jot it down from your heart it's a very very important exercise because at the end it gives you a reality check as to how well you are doing how well you're progressing right now as you go from idea into experiment now here's where you start executing your plans right so when you go for your next say interview i'm sure a lot of you are already interviewing or you're going for your interviews right uh, don't ever go into an interview with the same approach so as an example if anybody is asking uh, as an example ramesh okay i'll just pick you okay what who are you? give me your st- strengths and weaknesses okay as an example all interviews will always ask you those questions right these two questions uh give me a little bit about yourself and your strengths and weaknesses make sure those kind of answers leverage your skills your wisdom your attitudes and your goals which is what your swag is but you can't say i'm a uh, you know i'm a creative thinker i'm good at this i'm good at that build it up with stories with examples stories go a very very long way which is why i was saying maintain a journal because your journal will have those incidents those little things which actually showcase your skills your wisdom the way you think right so use stories as a way to experiment exercise your skills and always make sure when you're exercising your skills people today are in a world where they should see you as a go to person now it's not important for you to be good at everything you pick which is the one thing your unique selling proposition that you are super bad outstanding at and you believe in it with stories with examples that's so so important build the wisdom now wisdom does not happen over time and experience so i want to give you some news a person with 25 years experience can be as wise as a person with 2 years of experience in the world we are living today this would be in a fact a decade ago. but now wisdom can be got 
through this process i've introduced you to by experimenting by doing many things by shifting jobs i'm encouraging you to not stay in a job for more than 2 years please don't do that okay the moment you get your skills you get your experience get the hell out of there because i'm, I'm telling you the world is changing very fast Lo loyalty everybody knows now hr is nothing loyalty from you trust and those, those organizations that expect to be loyal to be around for never are actually not helping you grow and or helping grow their co chain we need fresh talent fresh ideas right so frankly don't join a company with loyalty join a company because you have something to offer you are the best at something and they so it's like a partnership remember that it's of your age your experience from the get go business this is that treat you as a partner as something that you are bringing to the table and in return they are not just giving money anybody they are giving opportunities to learn and grow yourself your skills helping you achieve what your goal ultimately is which you just defined in the previous two slides right they understand your dream they understand what's important for you that is the kind of organization you want to be with that is the kind of organization as an entrepreneur also you want to be right where your attitude that's super super important right that is one of the things that make you unique right otherwise all of us have the same degrees right so what's going to differentiate you skills we can all learn how to do new things but what is unique about you is your attitude right so believe in yourself and what makes you unique right nail your goals every, uh, you know every step along your way keep your dream in mind keep your goals in mind keep asking yourself am i doing what i set out to become your why all right and as you do it continuously go for self improvement right that's so so important every step along the way please do not settle for mediocrity right uh, so as an example if i go into experimentation here here's an example of how i would like you to take feedback right so if your mentor or somebody your boss is saying bad dog okay <laughs> don't feel offended you are asking for more information how can i improve right take feedback in a very very positive manner because every feedback that your boss or your instructors or whoever is giving you understand whether it's going to help you achieve your goals sharing now i'm just going to spend 5 minutes on this because i really believe the landscape has changed right has absolutely evolved and I'll tell you. In my time, we used to build profile and CV, right? And everything was about your CV. Today, it is not just your CV. Today, HR has access to LinkedIn, has access to your Instagram account, has access to you on Google, right? Now, either you can sit and be very cautious, or you can use these platforms for your own growth. and the exponential growth i'm talking to you about is actually a part of the story this can take your career to the next level and i'll give you an example of how i use linkedin and i used linkedin to get at least two of my last prior prior previous jobs in a bit so creating online content in my mind is a mandatory thing now okay get on linkedin make connections start finding out who are those people who you want to get connected with that can help you grow and learn right in terms of your own growth everything you just defined in the last few steps right your dream your goal remove connections who are useless okay please do do that i see a lot of young youngsters who just make who want to follow everyone just because either they want to a so called chhatra chhaya of the senior leadership or they just want to have many 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 fans and followers please that's all rubbish throw that out the window use linkedin use medium use it to really build a brand for yourself because tomorrow i'm telling you i can't can't stress nobody your cv is more trust me because this can be in your true self happen in social media okay your true self can be judged through behaviors and today a lot of companies are using 
filing tools, guys, that go beyond your CV. Your CV is the first check. They do that. It's like a screening. Okay, good. He's got everything in it. He's got the experience. He's got the right skill. Okay, fine. Now, now, how do we know whether he's the right fit? They go on LinkedIn. They'll go on all other platforms on, on Google, and they'll search you. Now, in, if you create a aura yourself, the right kind of stories, the right kind of videos, the nice kind of examples of content, then you're making the job for the employer easy enough to hire you. Understand that. So I'll give you an example of how I got my last job. I've actually made three transitions in my career in the past 20 years. I, I, I started off uh, about 25 years back as a programmer, as a developer in the IT space. Moved to the US as a consultant, uh, got my MBA. I quit my job in the last recession, which was at the 9-11 incident. I quit my job over there uh, and everybody was asking, what are you doing? behind the session, why are you quitting your job? I felt at that time that is the right place to invest yourself in education. That's the right space to really go in and make a shift because I didn't want to do any more programming. I wanted to now slightly move towards the business aspect. So I applied to MBA colleges in the US. I got my MBA and once the recession was almost, I got a job in Deloitte, right? So education and learning actually helps you transition into new opportunities, right? But you have to challenge yourself to do that. So I did that for a few years, and then I joined Reliance in the US after Deloitte, and then I quickly transitioned from IT into advertising because I I could sense that the whole space of IT technology, data analytics, and that whole spend is actually moving into the digital marketing uh, uh, era. And that happened about in, in 2011 and which is almost nine years from now. I can't imagine, you know, eight, nine years. But the moment I did, it opened up another space in terms of where I can use my sound technology. So be very aware and uh, aware and write down what your softer skills are as well as your transferable skills. Transferable skills are those skills that helps you transition from one industry to another industry keeping trends in mind, right? So it's so, so important, right? Uh, now, as you do this, make sure that you're writing a journal. I keep journals all the time. They are, there, they are there with me all the time because it gives me a reminder. Am I pro progressing? Am I moving into the next? I've been doing this 20 years of my life. And the reason why I'm able to do this and really give you a frame you know, this has made me work for a number of very, very successful people out there, right? I don't know if you you read the book of uh, yeah, Elon Musk, the recent book, and also these kind of books like Bold, which is by Peter Diamandis from Singularity University. Bill Gates has his book, you know, Warren Buffett. You will see all of them are hardcore followers of design thinking without saying the word design thinking. They are doing this five steps consciously they discover they really so the process which I've just with you is not a linear process it's actually an iterative process but it's so important for you to have that prerequisite in in place that dream what are your goals nail that and then follow the process continuously so and you probably have heard this over and over again that life is a journey, it's not a destination. It might sound extremely cliche, but I'm telling you, as I stand here with 25 years of experience today, I'm actually more excited about doing things uh, and about my journey going forward than I was in the past 25 years. Why? Because the world is open today. There's so much more opportunity. People who have the right mindsets are able to experiment and ideate and help others really are in the best place today, right? So make self-improvement a habit. Now, here's one line I'm going to leave you with uh, before I wrap up is really that uh, I'm really excited about your future because of the options and opportunities you have. But you have the next five years to discover yourself. So here's what my one line advice to you is. Use the process in whatever way you want. 
you can use only empathize only ideate whichever way it works for you but make sure you're continuously improving on yourself play with your options and design your career consciously because understand every day now is very important everything you do every day is an investment towards your future and let, let your true purpose emerge it may it may not happen next year in the next years even listen for feedback use the next to 7 years to recover who you are and what you really really do. because the world going up guys all your to take right so with with course that was uh, it's a virtual certification course on design thinking for innovation and uh, we are using online tools to actually teach design thinking to improve creativity innovation in the business context okay so i just wanted to share this with you we actually doing this with two three mba colleges right now and, and also a lot of corporates are, are using this everything is design these are the art tools uh, i mean as you can see here it's a cool uh, uh, tool here and uh, it's called the flying fish course really which is uh, you know around, around design thinking and we've specially created this so that it can help you uh be a lot more employable so all these skills we just uh, discuss empathy building growth mindset future thinking agile iteration all this you will be able to exercise um in this and a little bit of feedback that we've got it's unorthodox it's very cool it's impressive it's savage the interfaces are very state of the art the ibms ideos a lot of these bigger companies are beginning to you uh, use this uh, uh and, and i always encourage youngsters as you to really go for the next big thing because at the end of the day uh, it's it's becoming as i said very important to differentiate yourself with that i'm just going to wrap up, uh, you know wrap up and i thank you so much for your time open for any questions you might have yeah i think we could have a few questions if there are any any questions please so i hope it useful in terms of the whole structure and everything you know i'm always available dr smita so if any time uh, students have advice for any mentoring uh, happy to help so it'll be nice if you you know students if you can raise your hands and just you know if it was useful just give me a high five or whatever it'll be nice So I what a good presentation, guys. Helpful. If you can just raise hands with that icon. Yeah. Okay. I see a few hands going up. That's good. I'm just taking feedback. I'm also applying the design thinking process. uh your feedback means a lot so it'll be great uh if you can write to me at some point or you know I, i'm also available on linkedin as i said uh, uh you can connect with me there i'll be happy to accept your invite uh and if at any point you need any mentoring Okay, so I think Avinash, uh, there don't seem to be any questions coming in. 
maybe people are just okay. soaking in everything that you have talked about. Yeah. So okay. uh, one last. I'll go with that. Yes. <laughs> any any question? Yeah. yeah. Any question? Last to you in case you have any, and if not, I think uh, we have to thank Mr. Avinash Jangani for spending his valuable time with us. Uh, the way in which he has opened up, I think, different avenues for people to think, rather to rethink and to introspect, and to prepare yourselves to be ready. I think that was done in a very beautiful way. Uh, the presentation was lovely. Really liked the way in which you opened it up, and the way in which you were able to bring about all the ideas. So thank you so much, Mr. Avinash, and I hope that uh, we are going to stay connected even in future. Right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Take care and good luck, everyone. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.